Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech. And today we're taking a look at the GMK67. Now, I recently, I, I actually, I, mean, I haven't finished. I'm going to finish the video for the EpoMaker EK68 after I do this one, because they're basically the same keyboard. I just want to pull it up real quick. I don't want to make this video about this keyboard. So they're, I mean, they're the same, but they're not. Um, the Epo Maker EK68. This is how it comes. It comes with a choice of a couple of the uh, Epo Maker switches, uh, the Budget Ear, and I think the Rose Glacier. I'm not sure on the second one. Or Gatoron Yellow Pros, which this one has. It does come with switches and keycaps. The and retails for ninety dollars. So I will be putting out a video probably around the same time. Of this one with the sound test and everything now where they do share differences besides the switches and the keycaps comes in the plate material the gmk 67 comes with a polycarbonate plate the epo maker as always cut the corners they come with a steel plate uh, so that's where there's pinging that you might hear in the sound test if you go watch the Apple Maker EK68 uh, video. But real quick, before we get into this one, I just wanted to do what I always do and just check out what's in the box. There's very rarely a surprise in here. Um, of course, we've got our manual. And I think, yeah, it's in two languages as the basic functions. I also want to make a correction. I previously, I, I, I don't know if I stated or I commented, I mistakenly believed that this was a via QRK keyboard and that does not appear to be the case. Now, I do think that this keyboard is a plastic version of the c 2 v 65 which is a QMK via, well, it's via. There's no QMK source. Unless somebody knows of a QMK source for the c 2 v 65 please let me know in the comments below. So it is not a QMK board. It has its own uh, basic, uh, very standard Chinese software. So in the box, as I said, no real surprise. We have a USB-C to USB-A cable. It's a, it's a nice braided one. It looks like a little bit longer than your standard uh, uh, two yard, two yard or I don't know, they're six feet. Actually, it looks like it might be a tad longer. And your metal keycap and key switch port. So nothing. Yeah, nothing else. Nothing um, surprising about it, but I'll always take a look. You never know when you might get something you weren't expecting. All right, so what we have here is a 65% um, hot swappable keyboard, south facing LED, three mode, and there is a pocket for the dongle right there, which is always nice. And they, they don't use that empty space to at least make a pocket for the dongle. It's kind of silly. Anyway, um, it clips in there quite nicely. Doesn't look like it's going to fall out easy. We've got our Mac and Windows hardwired switches, as well as our 2.4 or um, Bluetooth uh, switch and a USB-C port. We do have a metal. Um, uh, I kind of wish it was a little bit bigger, but I get that it is a small space there and you don't want to start interfering with keycaps. So we have a nice, I would say probably aluminum with a plastic inner collar. Uh, knob uh, for the top of the encoder we have it does come with plate mounted stabs and these these stabs are actually quite quite solid on here they are they're not going anywhere the tolerances on these are some of the best i've seen for plate mounted especially on a pc plate but as i've been told by another owner of a jmk 67 if um, he is he was able to use ACO pcb screw rod stabilizer so i do know the pcb has the holes for the um, <clears throat> excuse me the pcb has the holes for screwing pcbs and as long as the plate has enough space for the stabilizers or you might have to file the plate though it being polycarbonate we shouldn't be that big of a difference if you really want to go uh, and do pc sta uh, pcb stabilizers although like i said these look pretty good um there is just the slightest amount of lube on there it's a fairly light board and there is not as much hollowness, but 
there is a bit of hollowness in there. But today we're just going to take a look at this board bare bone. I want to, in my, honestly, I've been, being the holidays and everything, I've been busy, but I've been wanting to get the difference of what this one sounds like in comparison to that one. Thankfully, I do have some Gatoron Pro Yellow Chews, which is what the uh, Epo Maker has. So I've got those. I don't have any thick enough OEM keycaps. So I'm going to be going with uh, probably some SA. Uh, I mean, I know they're a little bit taller, but it should be as close to as you know similar. I don't want to take the keycaps off that one and reload it. It's, um, so this does have a 3,000 <coughs> excuse me 3,000 milliamp hour battery. I've only tested it uh, just real quick over Bluetooth, and it connected pretty easy. Um, I haven't really gone into it, but I am going to uh, mod it and get more into the software. I do believe it has, it, it looks similar to other Chinese software that actually has a custom mode where you can do per key RGB, which I know some people really like, especially when you can do the modifiers and the alphas, the different colors to kind of accentuate the caps that you have. Because, I mean, I know there's a big argument between south facing and north facing, and I mean, interference is little by little becoming no more of an issue. It used to be much more of an issue back in the day, um, but, South facing or north facing, one's not better than the other. It's really just about preference. So, people saying that you must buy this. I mean, obviously, if you want shine through keycaps, there's a lot more choices of shine through keycaps for north facing um, LED keyboards. There are front and side um, shine through keycaps for south facing LEDs as well. They just, there aren't that many out there. So, it really, you know, comes down to preference because it's not like one is built better than the other. That's just something I just wanted to put out there. So anyway, we do have an indicator for our battery, as well as I think that's a wireless connection. Um, and we've got four screws holding it in. Now, since I am gonna be coming back to this board to mod it, I'm just gonna go with it right now. I'm just gonna, we're gonna take a look at it. You know, it has, actually has nice lines, but like it, if you have the Sea-Doo B65 or have seen the video on it, you'll see that the lines are basically the same. For all intents and purposes, this is a plastic version of it, but we do have um, actually angled feet. Uh, and it's a CD, yeah, CD was wireless. So that was wireless as well, though it had no pocket because obviously it's an aluminum kit. Now, I found a lot of issues with the CD, but I do know that Final Key or Fancy Tech had something to do with it. So I honestly don't want to touch anything by that. I'm not sure. That's the manufacturer of this keyboard. Um, I believe that it is a white label. Zoya is a store on AliExpress. So it looks like they white labeled this board as they white labeled a lot of CIY boards, but I could be wrong. This is just my guess. I would think though that if they were CIY, they'd be using CIY um, hot swap sockets, but I'll have to check it out when I go into it. So today I'm just gonna go ahead and load up some Gatoron Yellow Pro 2s and um, some keycaps and we're gonna go ahead and give it a run for the sound test i mean like i said i like it i this to me is i want to say almost like an updated version of a lk67 though a tad bit smaller but south facing and a polycarbonate plate now you can buy aftermarket polycarbonate plates as i did for if you can't tell, this this layout's one of my favorites besides TKL. Um, but this this one has a polycarbonate paint aftermarket one. Um, but yeah, I have I have a few LK67s around, maybe more than a couple. <laughs> but anyway, so this one I really like. I actually, I love that it's almost like a modern, you know, like a cutoff. Um, the way that this knob is designed, or the cutout for the knob, I should say, um, instead of blending it in. I like that it has you know, its own indicator lights. It's one thing I like about LK67. Um, south facing, you know, a lot of people, if they're using older switches or older keycaps, south facing is gonna prevent that interference if they're using those cherry, thick cherry keycaps or switches that have not had the mold modified to work properly with uh, either north or south facing. But anyway, this is a keyboard that I'm interested in. Uh, I was, um, like I said, I'm interested to see what it's going to sound like compared to the Epo Maker. And I'm really excited about getting into this board and modding it. I, basically, starting probably at the beginning of the year, 
that's all I'm gonna be doing is mod videos for a while because I've been doing review videos and I've got a stack of keyboards that I wanna make them sound much better. And I've gotta get there. <laughs> I gotta stop reviewing keyboards, just put a pause for a minute and get to modding. Because, I mean, for me, that's a big part of the hobby. It's not only, you know, discovering new boards, but also, you know, finding ones that may not sound the best, but it's well-priced. You know, and then you put a little bit of effort and it sounds like, whoa, sounds much better than it did stock. And it usually does not take that much. And most keyboards will sound better modified. I mean, there are some that they're just a lost cause, but I think that's more the exception than the rule. Um, we have, especially those of us that have been in the hobby for, you know, the last, more than the last couple of years or last couple of years, the game has changed significantly and it's going to change even more in the upcoming year in 2023 we we went from in 2020 2021 you know to you wanted to spend under a hundred dollars for a bare born bare, uh, bare bone kit you were looking at you know an rk61 or an rk68 just you know 100 bucks just for the bare bone kit then you know you had to find switches and keycaps you were looking at least a couple hundred dollars investment minimum to get a decent budget board up and running now we have how many of the keychron v models or v series have been released most if not all under a hundred dollars loaded and they're via qmk out of the box we've got the uh mons geek a sister company of Aco, just came out with a fully aluminum qmk via 75 percent with a knob for 99 bucks Things have changed significantly. They're getting better. A lot more entrance into the game. So I'm excited to see what the new year has in store. What are you guys looking for in the new year? Let me know in the comments below. Gator on yellows. Load this up. And then we will go and find a keycap set to put on here. All right, so here we are with the uh, Gatoron Yellow Pro 2s loaded up. As you might have been able to tell, if you like flex, this board's got flex for days. I mean, I believe it does come with um, some sort of under, under the PCB dampening. I know it has it in between the PCB and the plate. Uh, and I believe that if you remove it, you can even get more flex out of it. So I'm not crazy. I mean, I don't like like extra crazy flex. I do like this amount of flex. It's nice. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and just plug it in real quick and kind of get an idea of what the lights look like. And here we go. Here's the uh, GMK67 with the switches in and the RGB. Um, so we're going to have, you know, the different effects. Uh, probably wanted to go through the uh, solid colors um, but it's fairly bright it's not the brightest I've seen and it's not the dimmest I've seen it's like right in the middle so yeah I'm very interested to see what this is gonna sound like so these are called um, MG white or MG dawn yep dawn so they're an SA uh, keycap. I want to say they're iPhone. It could be YMDK. I don't remember the manufacturer offhand. So it's not quite OEM, but they are double shot. So it's similar, close enough, I think, uh, because of body thickness. I believe on these are the same 1.5 as they are were or are on the uh, Echo Maker EK68. So let's go ahead and I'll disconnect it while we do this load up some keycaps and uh, have some closing thoughts and then we'll uh, go ahead and do the sound test. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Zoya GMK67 bare bone kit. It is a 65% free mode gasket mount south 
facing RGB LED keyboard. It does come with a 3000 milliamp hour battery as well as a 2.4 gigahertz dongle pocket. It comes stock with a PC plate and plate mounted safe wires that are lightly lubed but it also has support for PCB mounted stabilizers. Currently MSRPs are around 50 US dollars. The chin sits at 21 millimeters off the surface with a default height of 28 millimeters and a default typing angle of eight degrees. If you raise the middle feet up, you will take the back height to 33 millimeters and change the angle to 11 degrees. Using the final and last set of feet, the back height will sit at 39 millimeters off your surface with a 14 degree typing angle. And here we are, the GMK67 all loaded up. You still, you can see the flex in there. That's really nice. So I've got to say, I got this board for less than $50 uh, shipped and taxed. Um, I think it, the last time I saw it was like $51, but they had like a $3 off coupon. Um, so I, I know this board is sub 50. Now the Epo Maker is 90, is what it lists for, though it does come with switches and keycaps, but selection is limited. And it is a steel plate. Now, if you prefer steel plates, well, but one significant issue that I have with the Epo Maker version, besides the steel plate, is the fact that it says designed and manufactured by Epo Maker. That is a lie. And that is not the first time Epo Maker has lied. They have actually presented forged documents on public internet forums trying to claim that they had ownership of the Ducato VN96, which they sold as the TH96 on Kickstarter. This board was listed in late October. The Epo Maker board was just listed within the last couple of weeks in December. So Epo Maker is not a company to be trusted. I hate to go on this rant right now, but I have to continue this. Companies that mistreat consumers, that lie to consumers, that don't send consumers the right product, that don't provide support after sales, that lie and just force you know cons consumers to send video and pictures and then finally all they do is give you a coupon. They don't even honor their own warranty. Companies like that need to go away. And the only way they will disappear is if people stop purchasing from them. So sorry about that quick PSA, but EpoMaker is detracting from the community. EpoMaker is a negative in the community. And as such, we should not support them. I mean, it's just it simple sense. We got to speak with our pocket. Now, 2023 is coming and there's going to be a lot of great boards and every single board that Epo Maker ever lists, you're going to be able to buy somewhere else because Epo Maker does not manufacture their own keyboards, does not manufacture their own switches or keyboards. They're all white labeled or purchased or licensed from other manufacturers and other designers. So that's my PSA. That's my rant. I go ahead and plug her in real quick, see what she looks like with the RGB and the keycaps on. Obviously, they're not going to shine through as much, but looks like we can still see it nice enough um, that we could probably find a color. There we go. A nice little yellow. Um, probably dim it in here a bit so you could see it better. We've built the GMK 67. This is, like I said, I believe a white label board. It's from Zoya, store on AliExpress. Um, though Epo Maker does have their own version, but well, I won't get back into it. So, so far, I think this one's going to sound better. I, I think it sounds better than the Epo Maker. Uh, obviously, it has a huge advantage with the PC plate. I mean, so it's kind of hard to beat that. So it, it's almost an unfair advantage. But I personally would pick this one, even if Apple Maker didn't have the issues that it did. Because this one allows me to pick the keycaps 
and the switches that I'm going to use. Whereas with Epo Maker, I'm stuck with that set, which is like a dark mechanical or industry, heavy industry dark. I don't know. Um, I don't, I, the yellow on the gray for me, maybe it's just how I see perceived colors. They're both very light and they just kind of blend in. Not that I need to see my keys, but I want to, you know, if I'm going to buy a keyboard, I kind of like to pick how it's going to look. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have bought some pre built and I do like them or I just, that's just the price and I'm going to switch out the keys, uh, the switches and the keycaps. But anyway, this is the Jam K67. It retails for around $50 bare bone. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test loaded up with Gateron Yellow Pro 2s. And this is MGSA uh, Dawn. Until the next transmission.